preach from the subject. My burdens are too heavy for burdens, difficult or worrying responsibility. My brothers and sisters, some burdens are meant to be shared. Some burdens are meant to be shouldered. And some burdens are meant to be shared. The truth is, we all have burdens. Some have a physical handicap, chronic sickness. Some have emotional burdens, like depression or anxiety, a heartache over some loss or some financial reversal. Truth is, we all have problems and cares. And sometimes they weigh down upon us like a burden on our back. We don't all have wealth, but we all have burdens, whether they're the health nature, whether they're talent, or our own home, our own children, it could be our hair or the lack of. But every day of life here on earth brings to us its own assortment of burdens. And since there are so many burdens, I, I don't have time to deal with all of them on today, but can I just share an example from some? Uh, some burdens are meant to be shared. In Galatians, our text in Galatians gives us an example of burdens that can, are to be shared. It talks about faults and failures of others. Verse 1 says, when a fellow believer stumbles and falls into sin, Rather than pointing an accusing finger or shooting our wounded, we should reach down and give them a helping hand to lift them up and help them get back on track. In other words, we are supposed to encourage and strengthen one another when it comes to faults and failures. Uh, the only thing that will keep us from doing that, however, is that we think more highly of ourselves than we are. And so we need each other. And then there is sorrow and grief. You know, at any given time here at St. Paul, we have someone under a heavy load of sorrow or grief. Oh, yes. we, we've had a lot of great services here at St. Paul. They've been very spiritual. But every time we have a service, there's always somebody present who's going through something. They're going through some kind of trouble in their life. And so it behooves each of us to be kind to everyone because everyone has sorrow of some kind. Let me help somebody. Tragedy, sorrow, and disappointment, and depression, and grief will eventually visit the house of every person in this world. Uh, I, I recall Ruth in, in the Old Testament who, who had, had not expecting any help. She, she considered herself to be an outcast, but she was away from home. And, and she found out uh, that, that she could find favor in the sight of God because God comforted her even when she thought she was an outcast. There was a stranger in that foreign land uh, where she was an outcast. And while she expected to be ostracized because of who she was and where she was from, uh, and no one would have anything to do with her, this stranger came and comforted her and made a way for her. The question is, I want to ask you, whom have you comforted recently? Better yet, who has comforted you? You know, sorrow and all this tragedy, sorrow, distress, grief, all this stuff, all our burdens come. And, and the one reason that God allows those things to come to us is so that we can be comforted and then in turn comfort others in need once we've been through it. Is that all right? The our problem, however, is we like to wallow in self-pity and allow our tragedies to be wasted. But God wants to use them for good in others. Uh, many of you have been through some things that, you, that uniquely qualify you to help somebody else. That there are some people that the pastor cannot help because he hasn't been there. He hasn't been through those things. But if you've been through something, then you can help somebody. Help me here, Holy Ghost. Uh, so let's be patient. Let's be kind and understanding. And remember that everybody has burdens. The writer J. Vernon McGee tells a story about a church, one of his church members who accused him of ignoring him on the subway. And then it wasn't, uh, this was unusual for him because he normally visited and talked to everybody he came in contact with. 
And so he asked the man, what happened? What, what day did I do this on? What day was it that I ignored you, as you say? And the man told him exactly what day it was. And McGee said to him, I'm sorry. I, I'm really sorry. But, but I, I had that particular day was a very bad day for me. I, I got some very discouraging news. And I was carrying a heavy burden. And will you forgive me for ignoring you, as you see? And, and the man's heart was broken. He emphasized that and realized that his pastor wasn't perfect. His pastor had a life of his own and didn't exist merely for others at all times. And so the man apologized and became more patient and understanding of the problems of other folk. And so our challenge is to lift our burden whenever we can with a kind word or with maybe just a note because somebody is going through something and they just need a little bit of encouragement. Ah, but some burdens are meant to be shared. Then some burdens are meant to be shouldered alone. There are some burdens that nobody else can help you with. One such burden is the consequences of personal sin. My brothers and sisters, we live in a day and a time in which people want to sin, but they want to ignore the consequences. They, they want to do what they want to do and, and avoid the results. In fact, the attitude today is, it's not my fault. It's the way my parents raised me. I had a dominating mother, rejecting father. In fact, mama may have gave me oats too soon. You may play with dolls and all of that stuff, and now they made me do this, and they made me do that. It wasn't me, it was my boss. It was my ex. It was the, you know, this person and that person. I, listen, I don't want to minimize the effect of our past that sometimes have on us, but I am saying that Jesus Christ can get you past your past if you want to get past your past. But whenever you take on the former attitude too far, you're shrugging off all personal responsibility for your life. And, and you develop then what I want to call a victim's mentality. And everything is someone else's fault. I don't have it because somebody else should have done it. We're in a mess today as we don't take personal responsibility for the choices that we make. Now I understand that certain things in our past predispose us to certain things, but we still make our choices. And whenever you make your choice, you have to deal with the consequences of the choices you make. Yes, your parents, like all, all their lifestyle, may have exposed you to bad choices like anger, lying, gossiping, cheating, whatever it is, but you still have a choice to make when tempted with those same choices. But we like to play the blame game. In fact, we are world famous for passing the book. It's not your fault it began back in the Garden of Eden, you remember? Adam said it was that woman that you gave me. Oh, we still use that today. But, but it was also Eve who said it was that snake. In that she, what, but she wasn't referring to Adam. She was referring to the other snake. Satan. But the issue is when will we grow up and rise up, fess up, and say, I'm responsible? Because we can't rise above 